I'm Nick Jimenez, and this is the Cigar Snob Podcast. In this episode, you will hear our editor-in-chief and publisher Eric Calvino's interview with Luis Cuevas of Casa Cuevas Cigars. They talk, among other things, about how Luis got into the cigar business after law school and a career in school administration, the symbology behind the Casa Cuevas band design, and some of the product that's coming down the pike for the brand. So, without any further ado... Here is Eric's interview with Luis Cuevas of Casa Cuevas Cigars. So, Luis, welcome to Cigar Snob Podcast, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you for joining us and for bringing in some smokes. We always like that. So, I'm smoking a uh, a Cuevas Habano. You are. A Casa Cuevas Habano. Correct. Not to be confused with something else. No. But, (laughs) (laughs) but, uh... And yeah, well, we love the smoke. We just gave it a 91 in uh, in the issue that uh, the January February issue. Appreciate that very much, actually. So, yeah, very good smoke. Highly recommend it. So uh, so now you know, I think maybe some people don't know enough about. Obviously, you guys are in growth mode, so there's there are a lot of people out there who never really come across the brand. Correct. Right. So let's give them a little bit of of history about the brand. So like, when did you guys establish? Because you have your own factory, unlike. You, you guys didn't just show up. I know that the brand showed up for people, but you guys didn't just show up. You guys have been making cigars for a long time. For a long time. Um, in the 80s, um, uh, my dad and my uncle started uh, making the cigars. My, my father had a, a very successful air conditioning company here in the United States. And when my uncle came from Cuba, he decided this was going to work out for him. We want to continue what we had done as a family, great-grandfather and grandfather. In Cuba, uh, an aspect thereof, because my my grandfather and great grandfather were tobacco growers. It's a difference. So right? not cigar makers. Not cigar makers, but the idea was to continue within that that scope, meaning the cigar industry. Sure. So um, my dad started financing the operation. Um, I would do some of my summers over there. Um, it was it was a good time, and uh, and this and, was in Santiago. This is in Santiago. Yeah. In Santiago, Caballero. Santiago, Dominican Republic. Correct. We're, we're still there. Um, then the boom hit in the 90s, and uh, they blew up, and we were fortunate enough uh, to have some really solid friendships, my, my dad and my uncle with uh, Taranos, for example. Um, and they did a, a lot of different cigars for a lot of different people. And then as is prone to happen with family businesses, my father and my uncle had a bit of a falling out. I still love my uncle dearly. That's between my dad and him. Uh, and my dad went on his own, and he was sort of waiting around to recover a little bit of his investment, which was coming in. Um, and I'm an only child. And so one evening I hopped on a plane, this is nine years ago, and I went to go see my dad. And I asked about uh, continuing within the family tradition. At that point, um, I had been a teacher, I'd been a school administrator, and I had just finished law school. Um, so I, I went over there, and... Uh, my dad and I, my dad being a businessman, made me buy 50% of the company at that point, which is really, yeah. Uh, the idea was you have to have, I like this guy. Yeah, that's skin in the game, right? So we, we took uh, life savings, retirement, and whatnot, and my wife and I, and we bought. And right after that, we were able, again, through Toronto, to get a great client like Gurkha, uh, and that sort of got us to growth mode. Um, and... Ever since then, you know, we've, we've just been manufacturing cigars through a lot of different companies. A lot of them falter, and a lot of them have sold. We did stuff for Toronto for a while still, and obviously you know what happened. They sold and whatnot. Um, but along the course of time, it always was in the back of my mind to come out with a brand. The problem was coming out with a brand as a factory is not that difficult. Selling the cigars is really difficult. Uh, yeah, that's the hardest part of that's the whole the hard, thing. That's the hardest part. I tell people all the time... We can make a good cigar. Sure, sure. But if, if, if it's in the bottom of somebody's shelf, nobody's ever going to know it's there. Yep. And then the FDA steps in. So it was either put up or shut up, truly. And we were pressed for doing it. And right around that time, um, Gabriel Alvarez became available. Um, I didn't know Gabe at the time. I met him through Jack Tarano. And uh, Jack goes as a have played a tremendous role tremendous, in all of this. Tremendous. Truly. That's tremendous. Awesome. Tremendous. And, they get and they're all the great people. Over. Truly are. Yeah. Um, so I get in contact with Jack, hoping he would be the one that would come on. And he says, listen, I'm going to general right now. I got this great opportunity. But there's this young man who may be interested in. So Gabe and I had a, a lunch. Uh, I interviewed him. I always joke that 
I interviewed him, he interviewed me to see if I was, you know, some nut I want to make Fly a by billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, exactly, in a, in a year, that kind of thing. Um, and then and in you April... Don't, you don't? And no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 folks. If you're going to get rich doing this, it takes a long time. It may never happen at all. Probably won't. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And I was very fortunate to get Gabe to, to join us. And so in April, we launched. Gabe, Gabe came on board in October. And we launched in April of this past year. Uh, and it's been, it's been a good ride. It's been a good ride. So April 2017, you come out with the Casa Cuevas, Connecticut. Correct. Maduro and Habano. Correct. So I'm smoking the Habano, you're smoking the Connecticut. I am. In the 6x60 format. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're not a, you're not a big 6x60 smoker. I, I am not. I'll be honest with you. We, we came out with the 60s because there's a market for it. But uh, I like the smaller gauges, uh, 50, 50, 254. Uh, even so more. no Corona in the future? Yeah. Actually, we, we were just talking about that. We're thinking about doing a, a Connecticut Corona. Um, but that's... That's still in the works. Um, not really sure. We are coming out with a box press in all three lines. Uh, that is coming out this year. It's an so extension. Wait, before we go down that path, I, sure. I mean, so April you launched that. So you're at IPCPR. We are. We, we are IPCPR. As, how was that? How was that it as was your very, first IPCPR as a brand owner? It was Because right? it wasn't your first. I it, it, it wasn't my first, no. Yeah. I've been to a lot of them. It, it was my first as a brand owner, but we did not have a booth. We made a calculated decision not to have the booth. Um, well, I mean, if you launched in April, uh, you know, the show being in July, kind of a... Time was short, and the, 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 the expenses were going to be quite large, we yeah. thought. And um, truth be told, if they're going to put you next to the food court in a corner over there, yeah, your friends will get to you. But by that point, you know, they already bought whatever they're going to buy. Yeah. So we use it as a, um, as a stepping stone to create business, and we wound up having to stay an extra day because of that. So it was a really successful IPCPR for us based on that. It was really, really good, and we're going into it this year as well without a booth. Without same a same booth. idea, same idea. Same idea. It was that successful. What we did is we took essentially the monies we would have spent, ideally, right, um, on a booth, and we parlayed that into traveling. So we've been traveling quite a bit, um, he and I. Like just you guys as a couple just traveling all over the country? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of sexy, you know. <laughs> He's a little furrier than I would like, but what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> At least my wife doesn't get jealous over that. Yeah, well, yeah, so it's, it's a positive. It's a positive it, it silver works. lining. Uh-huh. So, uh, so now, uh, just one more quick note about the Casa Cuevas, uh, the original, li the three lines, right? Mm-hmm. So there's, a, there's some meaning behind the, the label, right? Like, uh, when you look at the label, you just, you know, you see Casa Cuevas and you see four stars and you see some medallions on the side. But there's some meaning here. There, there is meaning behind it. And, and uh, I've got to give credit to Humberto Arias for doing that from Cigar Package Design. He, uh, he's the one that came up with also the idea. Also a friend of the program. No, a friend of the magazine. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, so he asks a series of questions. And based on my answers, when we first got into doing business together, came up with the idea. So the four stars are the four generations, meaning my great-grandfather, who had left Spain, gone to Cuba, my grandfather, my dad, and now myself. Um, and then the medallions, um, you've got the seal of Spain, Cuba, and uh, Dominican Republic, because that's where we are now. So that's the meaning behind uh, the stars and uh, Well, the where we are now is the U.S., so what's going on with that? Meaning where we are now in terms yeah, of the like factory. In terms of, no, physically at this moment, you and I we are. are. We are. We're Miami, Florida, and it's, it's balmy, and I don't know what it's Beautiful. Like in, yeah, absolutely. But there are, there are some things in the works, right, for this year? There are. I was just mentioning a few minutes ago, and, and um, we are coming out with a box press. That's going to be coming out later this year, and we're excited about that. Um, we are going to be coming out with a limited edition Lancero as well, in the Abano and in the Maduro. We're not going to do the Connecticut and Lancero. And then further down the line, there is a grandfathered line that we have called Cuevas Habanos. And the word Habanos really didn't refer to the wrapper itself. It referred to another term for cigars you know. Yeah. Um, so so just to give a uh, background, uh -huh. so in certain, in certain countries, and, and we're speaking now about Spanish speakers, mm -hmm. they will refer to cigars differently. Like in the Dominican Republic, they'll say cigarro, even though that sounds like cigarette. It's, yes. But it's not. They mean cigar that way. Uh, if it was cigarette, they say cigarrillo. Correct. Right? Correct. But, uh, but then in, in places like Spain, 
they'll say puros or, or they'll say habanos. Yes. And that's what they mean by a cigar. So yes. instead of saying a cigar, they say a casa cuevas, un habano, casa cuevas. Like exactly. that's the word for cigar. And in Cuban, you would say un tabaco. That's it. Which is also weird because that's the leaf that's in it, <laughs> not the product. But I digress. <laughs> so you're going with cuevas habanos. Cuevas habanos. And we have to go with that because that is the term that was used, actually the, the brand that, that was, was the used grandfather brand. back in 1997 or whatnot when, when my uncle and my dad had launched it. And so we're using that as a continuation. It's going to be a totally different blend, a totally different um, band and, and box. And even the, the boxes are going to be totally different. I'm giving too much detail. And not only in terms of how they appear, but how they are, um, how they laid out, how they're made. So we're excited about it because... A, it gives us an opportunity to have that grandfather line. If you guys are familiar with the whole FDA thing, it's important because then it parlays that into uh, substantial equivalence for the stuff we're doing now. So yeah, we, we probably don't want to get too crazy into that. No. <laughs> but uh, no. but what are the... Uh, so you had mentioned earlier that there's a, a potential fifth star on the label. In the Cueva Sabanos, we are because my son, who is now 19... He's a freshman at FIU, he's majoring in business, is a cigar smoker, and he's obviously interested in pursuing this. So if you follow Casa Cuevas on social media, mm -hmm. you will see Alec, uh, you'll see Alec smoking, and, yes. and you guys are smoking throughout. So what is it? It's at Casa Cuevas Cigars. At Casa Cuevas Cigars. Correct. All right. So, uh, so then that's going to be the fifth star. That's the fifth star, and it's also going to be the fourth seal. The fourth seal. There we go. Because we have a U.S. seal now, because my son was born here, and I was born in Cuba. So it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, we're excited about it. Um, and again, Humberto's done a really good job of, of designing this as well. So, so, yeah, we can't wait to see that. And that's going to launch when? More? When? Ah, uh, mid-year. Mid-year? Mid-year. Hopefully. Hopefully. So well, maybe have that for the show. Perhaps. Well, at, even at, though... at worst case scenario, what is going to be in, in, for the show will be the box press. That's a for sure thing. Um, that's that's already being produced at the factory as we speak. What are the challenges you're finding? I mean, do you guys box press cigars for other people? Yes. So you're well versed in box pressing. Yes. So, yes. just for people that may, so we can throw a little education into this one. So, how do you take a blend that you already have, like uh -huh. let's say this Cuevas Habano sure. that I'm smoking? How do you take that blend and now box press it? Well, you, you wind up putting a little bit less tobacco sure. in it yep, yep. because they do come out round to begin with. And essentially, you put them in these trays that are rectangular in shape. The cigar goes in, and very old school, you put a piece of wood on top of it and bricks. And you have to let it sit there for about 30 days minimum. If not, they'll lose the shape, especially when you light it up and heat it up. It'll expand. Yep. So it's a long process. But... Changing the blend is not really difficult. I, the the well, catch is... Well, other than you've got less tobacco in there. Yes, yes. So you want to keep the flavor profile there yeah. while using less tobacco, which yeah. is a bit of an art. In and itself. that's what I meant by the challenge, right? Sure, so that's the challenge. That's, that's the, the challenge. That's the hard part. And uh, the other, but if you're well-versed in it, and I've, I don't know because I don't know if I've ever seen a box-pressed product out of your factory, so I don't know about the challenge of not getting, uh, not having the wrapper wrinkle on you, Right, those things are the are the tough parts. Those things are the tough part because they, it'll pop, it'll crack, yeah, it'll burst. So, so yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. I'm excited to smoke. We like box pressed here. I do too. There's something that just sits nicely in your teeth. I like to I like to chew on my cigars, and yeah, uh, it just there's something They're about comfortable. it. Comfortable. Yeah, they are. They They're are. It's an easy smoke. So, yeah, we we dig that. So uh, all right, so man, thank you again for for coming down. Uh, we look My forward to, uh, to these things. So give me some, give me some ways. So we already talked about social media. The website is? Uh, Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars. cigars. Make sure you put com. cigars.com. That is the website. And, uh, and how else can they reach you? Oh, God. Uh, so Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. Um, what? Instagram. Definitely Instagram. I think, it's, But mostly it's Facebook and Instagram. You'll find us a lot. Twitter we're not doing a lot with yet. Uh, that's in the works, but we do have a Twitter account. Just haven't used it very much. And, uh, you know, we are in a variety of stores. If you go online and you look at our site, so you have we'll have it by state and where to find us. Yes, the retailers are there. So how many stores more or less are we talking right 67 now? 67 right now. 67, 67 accounts, stores. Which is not, not, not too terrible. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, really since April? It. Yeah, so. it's April. And December was a dead month, as yeah. you know. And, and January has been kind of... And what are the strongest states... For you. Uh, right now, local Florida yeah. is phenomenal for us because it's, it's, it's home.
Although it's, yeah, it's uh, there's challenges here for other sense, brands yeah. that, that don't live here, but for us, yeah, it, it's been easy. We've been very welcomed by a lot of, of friends. So our biggest our biggest accounts are here in, in Florida, South Florida. My outside dad. of outside of Florida, what, what else you got? Oh gosh, we're in. Let's see. Because you guys New, did some traveling. Yeah, yeah This yeah. past year, we're in New Mexico. We're in Iowa. We're in Hawaii. Uh, we are. Oh, in, that was tough. In Texas. Right? You had to travel out to. Hawaii. Did not travel to oh. Hawaii. <laughs> that, that would have been a great trip, but of course the wife would have been involved in that one, no doubt. Um, oh, but, no, oh. Not Gabriel, not the Gabriel. other wife. Okay. The other wife. The other wife. Yeah, yeah. the beautiful Denise. <laughs> but yeah, um, we are in um, Massachusetts. Um, we are in Indiana. I want to say. Well, yeah. I mean, just a Bunch general idea. States. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's good, man. So congratulations on your thank you success. Thank you. And uh, best of luck in the future. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, thanks for listening to the Cigar Snub Podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or SoundCloud, while you're at it, rate and review us. Also, remember that you can write us at feedback at cigarsnobmag.com. We're looking for listener questions that we can pass along to cigar makers. So if you have some deep burning question about cigars that you uh, have not been able to find answers to, by all means, send it our way and we'll do what we can to unravel the mystery with our friends in the business. Again, you can get to us at feedback at cigarsnobmag.com. Aside from those cigar questions, that's also where you should send any comments, questions, uh, corrections, whatever it may be. Again, I'm Nick Jimenez. This is the Cigar Snob Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Take care.